so this is a question where suppose you assume the patient is ventilated for severe community acquired pneumonia he was initially saturated well on your prop whatever ventilator settings you have kept now suddenly not suddenly over a period of time you find the patient is gradually desaturating over the last one or two hours so always remember your target oxygen levels are never 100 we hate to see 100 in the monitor screen it should be just above 92 or 94 so in ards especially the more severe is the problem you target even lower saturation in severe ards it is only 88 to 92 in mild ards it is 92 to 97 so never target 100% saturation so before you uh, identify the desaturation always rule out this oxygen supply is there any problem with the supply or is there any loose connection those things should be sorted out so once this is sorted out we'll go into the factors which will affect the oxygenation so again next one more graphic so this is a very very important graphics which you have to remember to understand what are the factors which affect oxygenation so remember mean airway pressure so mean airway pressure is the one which determines your oxygenation in any patient on ventilator here again you can see this is a square wave form so square wave form can be flow time scalar or pressure time scalar because there is no negative deflection this is definitely not a flow time scalar so this is a pressure time scalar with a square wave form in pressure control mode the pressure is constant so this is a pressure time scalar in pressure control mode here you can see this is zero and uh, this is a pressure on the y axis time on the x axis this is a peep positive end expiratory pressure and air goes inside the lung and it generates a peak inspiratory pressure throughout the time of inspiration and it cycles towards expiration this is one breath and you have another breath here the area under this curve becomes the mean airway pressure so by increasing the mean airway pressure we can increase the oxygenation so how all can we increase the mean airway pressure one way of doing it is increase the peep so basically this height can be increased from the baseline here it can be increased to here so that means you have more area which is available below it so increasing the peep next option is increasing the pip the peak inspiratory pressure the height overall height is increased first the base is increased then the height is increased then you if you keep it for a longer duration of time suppose this is 0.5 seconds you keep it for 1 second so you get again more area so peep can be increased pip can be increased i time can be increased or here you can see there are just two boxes here suppose you keep more boxes here suppose more respiratory rate again the area under the curve will be more so these are the ways by which you can increase the oxygenation so based on this so here you can see this is like uh, first check the oxygen source if it is okay or not then check if there is any problem in the underlying duct it can be the pneumonia ards or any pulmonary edema or collapse so next question so whatever based on i have explained you so what is the best way to improve the oxygenation either it is increasing pip i time so all these factors improve oxygenation i am asking you what is the best way to improve oxygenation dr vasan we'll wait for a moment uh, to sure. on, answer the questions so far we got uh, 40 responses yeah 20% are selected option a 8% are selected option b and 73% are selected option c and none of them are selected option d okay i think uh, you have answered it correctly so i'll just go to the graph again to explain here you can see peep is the so always oxygenation is equal to peep just remember that whenever there is desaturation or whenever there is problem in oxygenation just increase the peep so based on the x y so you you are trying to increase the baseline itself from a lower level to a higher level so once you increase the baseline the overall height of the graph increases so the overall area under the curve increases so that's why peep is the answer so peep is the best way to improve your oxygenation so what are the measures to improve 
oxidation. It can be ventilator measures or non-ventilator measures. First obvious reason is FAO2. First, immediately you increase FAO2. Whenever a patient desaturates, first increase FAO2 100%. But that is just a temporary measure because oxygen itself is toxic. High FAO2, if you give 100% FAO2 for 12 hours, it is highly, it can damage the lungs. Suppose you give 60% FAO2 for more than 36 hours or so, then again it can damage the lung. It can cause uh, atelectasis, it can cause <coughs> like cytokine release, it can cause free radical injury. So oxygen is toxic, remember that. So by recruiting the lungs with PEEP, you can try to come down on the FAO2 levels. So these things we already discussed. Other most important parameter to improve the oxygenation. You have all done this. Increase the PEEP, your PIP and I time, everything is set. Till your FAO2 requirement is very high. Then you can transfuse hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is an important component in your oxygen tissue delivery. So, because hemoglobin is the thing which carries oxygen in the blood. So, suppose your hemoglobin is low. Just by transfusing hemo PRBC blood cells, you can improve the oxygen saturation. Suppose by all these measures, you are not able to improve the saturation, then you keep the patient calm. Suppose if he is ag agitated, sedate, I mean moving around, the oxygen requirement generally increases. His heart rate goes up, so his oxygen requirement increases. So once you keep him calm, maybe sedate him completely, your oxygen requirement may come down, so your oxygen saturation may improve. But these are just, the efficacy of this is like very minimal, it will not have a major impact. So if your saturations do not improve by all these measures, you think of alternative methods. Like one of the alternative methods is put the patient prone. Suppose by lying supine, the basal areas of the lungs, dependent areas will get collapsed. So you change the site, put him prone so that more alveoli will get recruited. Other options are different ventilators, high frequency ventilators and nitric oxides can be tried. Despite all these measures, the patient is not improving. Always accept sometimes you, sometimes not always, sometimes you can accept lower saturation, especially in severe ARDS, provided your tissue perfusion is maintained. So that is called permissive hypoxia. <clears throat> so we have completed the oxygenation part of it. Next is ventilation. So ventilation is a parameter which removes the CO2. So what is your minute ventilation is? respiratory rate into tidal volume. If your minute ventilation is good, your CO2 washout will be very good. So your CO2s will be very low. So respiratory rate into tidal volume. So what is the tidal volume? Here you can see in this graph, this is again a pressure time graph. Here, this is the peak inspiratory pressure and this is the peep. So there is something called delta P, which is a pressure which drives the air into the lungs. So the PIP minus the PEEP is called the driving pressure. So that gradient, always you need a gradient for air to flow into the lungs. So this gradient is the what? one which will determine the minute ventilation. So respiratory rate into tidal volume. As you all know, we usually keep a tidal volume of 5 to 8 ml per kg. This tidal volume is determined by what PIP you set. PIP is already set at a baseline. You keep this pressure. Suppose I keep a pressure of 10 and see what is the tidal volume. Suppose it is just 3 ml per kg. I increase the PIP to 12 to see if the tidal volume is improving. I titrate it to 14. Then see if the tidal volume is improving. At whatever level I get a tidal volume of around 5 to 6 ml per kg. I mean 6 ml, 5 to 8 ml per kg. I leave it at that level. And based on that, you see your CO2 and adjust accordingly. One more important point is called alveolar ventilation. So the minute ventilation is the total ventilation. But what we are concerned is the alveolar ventilation because there are some areas like the bronchi and the upper airways which do not take part in gas exchange at all. But they overall ventilation will be there, but they do not take part in alveolar. I mean, they do not take part in ventilation. So that is called dead space ventilation. So that will usually be around 1 to 2 ml per kg. So you will always have to subtract that from the total minute ventilation. So in ventilation, always remember to do ET suction and then suppose you get a patient's blood gas CO2 as some 70. So always ensure that the ET suction is done and after which only the blood gas is taken. Usually 30 minutes later after the blood gas, always do a, when the blood gas should be done only after a ET suction because then only you will know the real carbon dioxide levels. 
and do not worry about high co2s provided if the ph is above 7.2 now the trend is towards lung protective ventilation we always do not want to damage the lungs we are trying to accept more co2s provided if the ph is above 7.2 and suppose you get a normal co2 for any patient that means you are over ventilating the patient so normal co2 is not normal so that means you are over ventilating so you will have to come down on your tidal volumes so that's why the trend is now to accept permissive hypercapnia this is called permissive hypercapnia permissive meaning your if the ph is above 7.2 irrespective of the co2 values you can accept it because isolated co2 increase is not going to cause any major harm the contraindications to permissive hypercapnia strategy will be raised icp where wherever your brain is affected or your patient has undergone cardiac arrest then you will not do this permissive hypercapnia strategy so again the causes of hypercapnia is carbon dioxide can be produced like by either like fever can cause excessive uh, co2 production seizures again muscle activity will increase temperature and co2 production will go up your feeds again there's something called thermogenesis so feeding thermogenesis after feeding the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide content will go up so this is way to increase production i mean causes of increased production then your minute ventilation is low as we already discussed your tidal volume and respiratory rates are low and tide, this thing minute hypercapnia can happen or your death phase is high suppose your peep is very high normally what happens peep is to open the alveoli but you keep the peep very high the alveoli can get over distended and that increases in death phase so that is also one reason for hypercapnia So how will you reduce the CO2? So first is you see if it is in the permissive level. If it is in the permissive level, you are not going to do anything. You are going to accept the carbon dioxide. Hypercapnia is accepted. So suppose it is not in the permissive level and you want to reduce it. You have two options. So you will have to improve the minute ventilation. You will check what is the minute ventilation now, and you will have to increase the minute ventilation. How can you increase? Either by increasing the respiratory rate. or increasing the tidal volume indirectly by increasing the pip which i already told you so which parameter to select you see whichever parameter is already in the maximum suppose your pip is already reached in the maximum level suppose it is already in the high 25 26 then you will not test the pip you will increase the rate to a particular value from suppose if it is like 20 you increase it to 22 24 something like that suppose your rate is already high is like 25 26 for adults you all obviously increase on the pip so whichever is already the maximum you will not touch that you will test the other parameter and you small babies you can try to decrease the dead space suppose this is an infant who has a this is called the etco2 for people who have not seen it so this is the mechanical ventilator tubings and this is the endotracheal tube you have a connector in between this is called etco2 so this is such a bulky tube sometimes when you connect etco2 the et tube can get displaced and this is contributing to the dead space so alveoli are here so this entire part is not going to take part in ventilation so this is all dead space this can all increase the co2 so what you can do is you can remove the etco2 if you remove the etco2 the dead space may come down and your co2 values can decrease in refractory cases you can try to control the co2 production one way is like reducing the temperature You can sedate the patient to keep them calm. You can try to reduce the carbohydrate load.